cool. We are holding a, a sort of interview hangout chat with uh, Deribit, which is a Bitcoin futures and options exchange. Uh, we have uh, known the guys from Deribit for a couple of years now. We had them on back a year and a half ago uh, to talk about just basic introductory stuff for their products. Um, so if you want to get a deeper history and overview, then uh, just listen to the first uh, recording that we did of this uh, on our YouTube channel uh, a year and a half ago. Um, actually, one second. He has disconnected. One second. Rack. Um, okay, John has reconnected now. So, um, as I was saying, so um, yeah. So, if you want to get the deeper history, then listen to the old one on the Waypool uh, YouTube channel. The history there. Um, so, um, a lot's been happening over at there a bit and in the general crypto markets and derivative space. So, uh, we were ho we were wanting to get. Uh, John back on to talk about uh, what's going on with Deribit and uh, just all kinds of other topics. So uh, I'd like to welcome then John Jensen, who is uh, the CEO of Deribit. Welcome back to uh, to Airpool TeamSpeak, John. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad to be back as well. Wonderful. Okay, so to start, uh, give everybody who is new and hasn't uh, has been has been actually too lazy to listen to the first one and hasn't actually dealt with there a bit. Tell everybody what it is you guys do, uh, and you know what you're about, what products you are offering traders. Uh, there a bit started uh, well and and still is uh, a crypto derivatives exchange. Uh, right from the start, uh, we have been offering uh, futures and options on on Bitcoin. Uh, similar like OKEX is offering and uh, BitMEX as well. Uh, on top of that, we have uh, a full options exchange. And uh, basically, you're almost, I think Coinnet was the first uh, options exchange technically, uh, but you're basically the um, technically the highest volume options exchange as it is now, right? Because the only other players are Ledger X and a couple of other. Uh, once, but uh, but you guys, is it safe to say you are the highest volume uh, Bitcoin options exchange? Uh, yes, that's correct. We are the highest volume options exchange, uh, and uh, there has been coined only. To my opinion, they didn't do a very well job, and it never, well, it never really took off uh, anything serious. Right, and uh, so you are offering a full suite of vanilla call and put options at a nice variety of strike prices for traders to uh, take liquidity on. So what, these days, uh, you know, what portion of the volume that you guys are generating is coming from that options side of things and the futures that you are running as well, because you're running both the futures trading and options trading. Yes, uh, in the beginning, uh, when we started, the, the options uh, trading was almost non-existent, very, very illiquid. Uh, so it was, well, let's say 95% uh, futures and 5% options. Right now, um, the, the, the options volume is almost equaling futures volume, or say 35%, uh, like one-third uh, options and two-third uh, futures. And I think that's also um, how it's going to stay, more or less. The futures will always have uh, more volume than options. But uh, our options really picked up and are doing uh, some, some decent volume now with a quite efficient market as well, with uh, very small spreads. And uh, what has changed since the last time we spoke that now the options are more liquid and traders are getting more interested in it? Are you noticing like an uptick in the sophistication of the average uh, crypto trader now or what, what has changed? I 
I hardly uh, <laughs> heard your question because the connection was bad, but the last part I picked up is what has changed. Um, well, uh, what has changed as for uh, why the options volume has been uh, uh, picking up, simply because uh, uh, more traders uh, know, know, know to find us by now, uh, but also that we got some, some very good market makers on board who are uh, quoting uh, as good as they can, uh, adding a lot of liquidity with smaller spreads, which induces, of course, uh, more trading. And what do you think is the biggest challenge in attracting liquidity and, and retail flow for, uh, for, for, for put and call options markets? Uh, do, you, do you think that it's still very difficult for liquidity providers to manage their exposure uh, effectively in the market? Or what's the biggest issue you are running into? Well, uh, I think uh, liquidity providing is, is really not yet an issue anymore. Um, uh, our liquidity providers or, or market makers, uh, they can uh, set up uh, big positions. They can hedge their risk uh, on the same platform with the futures. Um, so the, the, the challenge is simply to get uh, more flow to the exchange. Uh, not so much, it's not so much a liquidity provider issue. Okay, so let's let's talk how, a bit about how uh, Deribit matches up versus some of the other exchanges that traders are using. So, uh, primarily when it comes to derivatives, uh, whale pool traders are focused on uh, BitMEX and OKCoin, OK now OKX, uh, their futures. Um, and when it comes to the mar other margin trading, usually BitFinex or even Kraken uh, to get some... Uh, uh, exposure there. Um, so, how does there be how, how much leverage are you offering on your futures and options products, and how do you manage the risk uh, when a, a counterparty in these markets is is low on collateral and nearing bankruptcy in the equity? Uh, we we had uh, until a couple of months ago, or or even less, we had uh, a, a maximum of 20 times uh, leverage. Uh, we recently increased this to 50 times leverage. Uh, the leverage is uh, slowly decreasing uh, the, as as the bigger get your position. So, for example, if you have a 200 uh, BTC position, your leverage would be uh, reduced to 40. Um, yes. And is that both on the options side of things and futures you're offering this degree of leverage? Sorry, I forgot to mention uh, the options. The, the leverage I spoke about uh, is is, uh, is about the futures. Uh, with the options we offer, well, it's not. It depends how you look at it. But uh, for for option buyers, there is not real leverage. You simply uh, buy the options uh, uh, with the balance in your account, and that's it. For option sellers, we offer up to, up to 10 times leverage. That means that you would have to deposit minimum uh, one Bitcoin to be able to sell 10 options, uh, um, 10, full, 10 options on one Bitcoin. So that means that you only deposit 10% uh, of, uh, of the underlying value. And if a counterparty writing, for example, a call uh, has put down 10% as collateral and the price just starts exploding. Uh, how do you handle the situation if this counterparty has uh, been bankrupt and there's no liquidity in the market to pass off uh, his position to a different counterparty? Yeah, you 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 said has been bankrupt. Well, then it's already too late. There there is a there is a maintenance margin. So a position of a trader would get uh, liquidated before he is he is bankrupt. Um, there is there is a there is a maintenance margin of of nine percent uh, in the in the options, meaning that there is still a long way to go before bankruptcy before we start to to liquidate. This is for the for the options market. It, it never happened that the option trader went bankrupt. Well, yeah, I, I can at least I can't remember. So, 
So uh, once the maintenance margin is hit and you're forced to liquidate the uh, a counterparty, what does how, the way the system is designed? How are you handling the case where there is no liquidity to capture the liquidation? How does the system handle this loss? There always has to be this uh, liquidity, but in case in case there is no liquidity. Um, uh, there is a, a limit to the to the worst price that a, that an option can get liquidated, which is uh, 0.05 BTC from its mark price. So if the, the, this this market is always there, but if there would be no market, this liquidation would at that moment uh, not take uh, place. But in a worst case scenario, um, a, a, an account could go bankrupt, uh, in, in which case uh, the insurance fund should be covering that. If the insurance fund would be empty, which uh, never happened in the history of the exchange, then the, the, the losses of this trader would be socialized among the winners in a day session. Uh, and and uh, and what has made you choose to uh, adopt this um, insurance fund plus clawback model uh, rather than uh, sort of a, a termination style model where uh, you just break off uh, the open interest between the counterparties uh, instead of affecting the, you know, the the other traders in the session? Uh, is there well, what's the benefit to using your model versus this? Well, uh, the, the model breaking of uh, contracts uh, also means that a trader who, is, who might not be looking uh, at his uh, position uh, it doesn't have the position anymore he expected to have. So this is, this is not also not a clean solution. Uh, we thought it simply to be a cleaner system to uh, allow everybody to be able to trade with high leverage, but at the same time, um, also accepting that there is a risk of uh, of bankrupt parties it's simply uh, a part of the game uh, you, you see the the cme futures uh, how much leverage they offer or, or ledger x uh, it's like no basically no leverage at all so it's i think it's a it's a it's a it's a price uh, everybody has to pay if participating uh, in, in this trading and uh, yeah, it's, it's my opinion that a socialized loss is a better system than simply canceling out positions uh, from traders. But uh, for both, there there will be something to say for sure. Okay, fair enough. And um, how um, how do you how does their bid prevent manipulation of the prices? How do you prevent a whale from coming into the market and just bidding up the options like crazy or smashing them down in the market and uh, forcing people's liquidations and, and uh, engaging in manipulative behavior like this? And just to, as an example, I would like to use uh, for for people recently who have experienced this uh, last month, OKX uh, had a crazy episode where someone was just dumping down their Bitcoin uh, futures market and essentially forcing a bunch of people to get liquidated and then OKX had to roll back the trades uh, and they were down for over a day or so and it was a total mess and it all uh, broke down because they didn't have a, a system that was suitable for addressing the, the manipulation risk and that, that happens in these high leverage markets. So how does there be the wide this sort of uh, a scenario that they experienced at OKCoin OK recently. Yeah, we have uh, we have a very uh, various uh, measures in place to 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 avoid this. Uh, first of all, that uh, the mark price uh, cannot uh, deviate. How to explain it in easy words? The mark price, um, there is usually a difference between the mark price and the index price, for example, uh, $100 uh, from Tango so, or, or degradation. This value is not allowed to change extremely fast within a couple of, within a couple of minutes. There is, some, uh, there is a delayed speed in this. Um, if there would be a party, like uh, talking about manipulation, like manipulation uh, would be more, more to with a small investment being able to 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 force the the price to go very very much out of line um it's it's if somebody has a very very long breath he can always push the market down but then 
you might not call it liquid, uh, you might not call it manipulation anymore, but simply uh, a big market for us. Uh, if somebody would want to do it uh, on on Deribit, he will he will need to have quite deep pockets because um, the mark price will be trailing this trading behavior if somebody pushes down the market and he will get filled with a lot of bad prices but if he keeps in there then then yeah the, the market can be manipulated but i wouldn't call it manipulation and it would be simply market forces but so you do use an underlying index in order to create a mark price that gives some sane uh, valuation uh, to the position Um, the mark price is uh, should be in the normal circumstances simply the price that 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 is traded. Okay, so for example, we are trading one hundred dollar um, with the future one hundred dollar above the index, and we are doing that for some time. Then basically that should be the mark price. But if it were to happen that a trader is just buying like crazy and buying it up to three hundred dollar above the index just within a very short period of time. Then we can assume that this is uh, a manipulation, and the mark price, in our case, will still be hanging in $100 above the index, and then slowly, in, in this is like a two or three, two two minutes period, it will slowly go to this new uh, uh, thing of $300 um, above the index. So that, that means that the trader would have to, this manipulative trader would have to keep on bidding this high price for two minutes and he will get filled like crazy but yeah if he keeps on doing that then eventually the mark price would go up um uh, to whatever he is bidding um on the other side we have a hard limit in the system um uh, which is uh, normally set to 10 percent it, it is a it is an arbitrary limit um that if for whatever reason um, the the future is trading more than 10% away from spot, we have to manually intervene um, to increase this limit. Uh, so, for example, what happened at OKEX, uh, even they had this rule, by the way, written, but for some reason this future went, I don't know, like even 30% uh, away from the index. Well, this this could not have happened. Uh, on dairy bit unless we would uh, forcefully allow this um, uh, due to uh, continuous market forces but this was uh, not not the case at OKEx. well I, honestly i don't know exactly what happened at OKEx, but it was very wrong for sure yeah i mean yeah, they ended up having to roll everything back so it was pretty pretty obvious it was not an actual market event when this underlying market was so flat uh, during the period or even going up so um so uh, you mentioned before that there has not been an insurance fund being um, wiped in the past, but um, I wanted to hear your comments about what happened last fall when you had a sort of liquidation algo engine uh, malfunction, uh, which which caused you to um, f uh, plug the hole on the order of uh, $250,000 or so. Could you tell... Uh, people what happened there and, and uh, whether it's liable to happen again and what you're doing to prevent this sort of issue yes we had uh, a last fall uh, an issue um, for for which we uh, uh, picked up the, the the full bill ourselves uh, traders were not affected uh, some some market makers helped us a bit uh, who has who had been selling at, at uh, outrageous prices uh, out of free will by the way uh, but all, all normal traders uh, have been uh, unaffected. Um, what happened was simply a liquidation algorithm uh, gone wild uh, in, a, in, a, in a user's account on a portfolio in a portfolio margin account. So it was simply uh, a small bug that had uh, big consequences. Just a, a, a liquidation algorithm running wild who who continued to buy the future uh, as if it was manipulating the future, continue to buy, buy, buy uh, until we stopped it. And uh, and now you have risk limits in place that uh, require higher margin pledging and any other sort of things that help to prevent that sort of reaction? Well, what happened was a bug. The bug is fixed. <laughs> so this ah, is, this well, is, okay. This, but this, this is not happening again. 
Okay, okay, okay. But there, there was. It, it sounds like there was a large, someone with a very large position that was getting unwound, which would also mean if you are requiring them to have more marks, and maybe that sort of helps. But um, that's. The, but that's also, uh, as you mentioned before, it's worth reiterating that uh, these listed products, the CME and CFE um, contracts on the Bitcoin, they don't really let you use proper leverage. Like uh, if you're wanting to have. 20 times leverage like OKX, 100 times leverage like BitMEX, or now 50 times leverage like crypto facilities and Deribit. This comes at, uh, there's, there's trade-offs, you know, if, if retail traders want this kind of leverage and they want people, they want to be trading against each other rather than some CFD provider or something, then you have to make uh, compromises when it comes to managing the system risk. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's just the reality of it. And uh, so let's shift over into exactly this topic of um, you know since we last talked and in the in the past six seven months, we've had this um, new entrance to the market of crypto derivatives. Uh, we you know whereas um, you know in the past there's just been only a couple of uh, you know, Terra exchange I think is CFTC regulated and uh, uh, Ledger X now, but uh, but now CME and CFE have their listed cash settled cfdc regulated traded everywhere on globex and these other brokers um and uh, very recently they uh, they did even half a billion uh, dollars notional in volume but uh, currently still m the market the lion's share of the market you know 80 percent of the volume is with um the offshore uh, exchanges the uh, bitmex okx their bits uh, so still, uh, it's, the, uh, it's, the, it's the unregulated guys that are dominating the market. But, but where do you see the future, no pun intended, of, uh, of, of the crypto derivatives market? And whether these new, uh, new guys from the legacy scene are going to take over and dominate? Or if it's going to be uh, your pack of uh, unregulated guys that are, are, are still going to dominate? Yes, um, I think it's in, in the first part not uh, about being regulated or not regulated, um, but we're speaking about a full cryptocurrency exchange where, where crypto, cryptocurrency is actually um, the currency of, uh, of deposit uh, and of accounting. Um, and um, the traditional exchanges, they work with uh, US dollar. Basically, uh, crypto is not being touched there. Um, Everything what happens on the CME has needs to be hatched on a real cryptocurrency exchange. There are no bitcoins on the CME. So if it stays like it is, um, basically the CME, you could see the CME product as a derivative from the real bitcoin exchanges, uh, and not the other way around. Uh, of course, things uh, things could change if CME would start um, a cryptocurrency exchange with cryptocurrency as um, uh, as, uh, accepting cryptocurrencies as a deposit. And uh, so, so what are your thoughts then on cash settled as a, as an approach, uh, whether it's cash settled in crypto collateral or cash settled in fiat in the case of uh, CME CFE? Uh, what, what do you think about cash settled versus deliverable uh, futures, which CoinFloor recently last month announced they are going to uh, I'm not sure if they've actually begun trading, but they certainly announced that they will be doing deliverable uh, 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 futures, where uh, in, instead of there being just a cash uh, PNL settling between counterparties, you actually have to deliver the Bitcoin uh, if you are short and uh, deliver the dollars if you are long. Uh, what, what do you think of that being an even more real uh, derivative of, of Bitcoin? Um, well, I do see some some problems there. Uh, it, it, it's a it's a val it's a valid product, but it it, it has different impl implications. For example, uh, well, Ledger X, as, as far as I know, um, they required uh, uh, full uh, collateral for writing uh, call options, for example. So if you would uh, want to write 100 call options on your uh, 100 BTC Bitcoin portfolio, you would have to deposit all your 100 BTC with them um, because it's also really deliverable. Um, I think traders would prefer to deposit a little bit less and uh, keep their coins uh, under their own control. So the same for the futures. Uh, if the futures really are going to deliver those Bitcoins, if you are 100 Bitcoins short 
in a in a futures contract, you would have to uh, you need to have those uh, 100 bitcoins at the exchange. So I I think uh, those products will uh, will have a fraction of the liquidity um, of the um, of the products um, that just uh, settle the the difference uh, in Bitcoin. So by the end of the year, then, what do you think CME and uh, SIBO uh, volume is going to look like versus uh, the crypto, the true crypto uh, uh, exchanges like there, BitMEX, etc.? Well, it's difficult, uh, difficult to say how things develop in the future. Uh, I think also nobody could have predicted exactly the today's situation a year ago. Um, but uh, I hope that their market will be growing. Um, um, but uh, said again, everything what happens on the CME is uh, hatched uh, somewhere else. So it, all, all their volume is anyway coming back to the to the to the traditional, but to the crypto exchanges. So so. Um... Shifting a little bit over to the topic of regulation in general, um, so you, you you mentioned that maybe the the, the, the distinction with those uh, products isn't so much regulated versus unregulated, but certainly there is a difference uh, between exchanges that have uh, state approval in various jurisdictions for trading their derivatives versus those that don't. Uh, how important do you think this is going forward now that we have so many institutional players more involved now in Bitcoin and crypto in general. Do you think this uh, this is actually an advantage to be in a, in a more regulated uh, uh, state for, a, for an exchange versus not regulated? Well, uh, being a regulated exchange uh, might um, uh, give, give more trust uh, to, to clients on the, on the platform. Um, but it, it, there, there are also more rules to comply with, which might make it more difficult to actually offer the products that the customers want. Uh, to give an example, though I don't know exactly um, how, how it got to be this way, but for example, on Ledger X, you have those uh, the need to trade fully collateralized which might have been uh, a demand from the regulator in order to get the license. Uh, um, but it, 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 it's, it's, of course, much better to be able to offer a, a leverage um, in a decent way. Um, and now, due to the regulator, you have this, the, this demand to, to only be able to trade fully collateralized. So in, in, in this way, uh, unregulated uh, exchanges will always be able to offer uh, more or better the products that the customers really want, simply because uh, they have less rules to comply with. Right, that's a that's a good point. And uh, so, what do you have you been noticing also this increase in institutional uh, demand for 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 your options in particular? Do you have any guy like legacy finance uh, market making uh, firms that are interested? Uh, have you have you noticed um, an uptick in the past year or so? Yes, um, actually, uh, I think on uh, uh, very bit um, the flow, uh, the institutional flow is actually r relatively big. Um, um, for example, in comparison uh, with uh, BitMEX, uh, the option trading is usually a little bit more sophisticated. You need to have more knowledge. Um, as for the um, as for the market makers uh, on our platform, they are all basically institutional traders, um, experienced uh, options traders who are active um, as market makers also in traditional markets. And uh, a, lot, a significant amount of volume in crypto, uh, even market make the market moving volume happens in the over the counter markets. Uh, are, do you have uh, some of those players that are starting to utilize options as a as a way to balance their exposure more efficiently, or, or is it still just guys that are you know, have their own little algos that are that they're playing with? Well, uh, market making market makers are, are institutions, but they are just market making. Uh, they are not um, taking up positions uh, against uh, 
against um, a Bitcoin portfolio. They are, it's the other way around. The market maker would take up a Bitcoin portfolio to, to hedge their options positions. Um, but yes, we, we do have some uh, institutional players uh, uh, like a hedge fund, investment, investment funds, uh, who are um, investing in crypto and they also take, uh, take options, options positions. But would you so would you say a majority of the volume is speculative versus hedging? What, what kind of numbers would you set on those uh, groups? Mm, that's difficult to say. In in a way, um, uh, I would say fifty fifty. Um, anyway, whatever whatever you do with uh, with a position, there is a speculation in it. Um, <clears throat> I would say fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it can get quite philosophical when you think about it, right? Because if you're uh, holding USD, then you're in a way short uh, Bitcoin. And in one way or another, when you're not in a position, you're in a position. <laughs> so you can't really avoid. Uh, it, it's like trying to be neutral when you have to pick a side. You have to. You're, you're on a side when you're not picking a side. Um, well, well, well yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, what we are seeing, for example, is parties holding uh, big, big, big Bitcoin positions. Um, uh, selling out of the money uh, premium um, to uh, have less risk if the price goes down because then they would uh, be able to keep all this call premium and if the price go up they profit anyway um, but then they have the expectation that the price would not go up too much and so writing those calls so this will be um, it's still speculative but it's also reducing the risk of the portfolio right and so, so how, how would you recommend to traders who maybe have some experience with futures and other linear payout uh, products, how would you uh, suggest that they get involved with options in understanding the nonlinear nature of the payouts and the different Greeks and how, you know, because maybe someone who's um, even a pretty sophisticated trader is going on there a bit, looking at the options and thinking, I don't know if these prices are right. What the fuck? How do I do this? So, so do you have any sort of tools or any um, resources uh, that to help bridge this gap for you know even sophisticated traders that are just not familiar enough with options and uh, something to hold their hand to move on over into the options world how would you advise uh, uh, people to, to do this well first of all yes uh, options does need some some education uh, on one's own uh, maybe the, the on the internet it's full of uh, websites explaining options um about advising what is the smart uh, smart trade to do um that's 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 a tricky uh, tricky thing um uh, generally speaking i don't think that um all options traders need to uh, understand the greeks uh, there is one uh, that there is one important uh, number that traders I think should should look at, and that is the implied volatility. Um, an option price is basically always implying a certain expected volatility uh, in the underlying, in this case the Bitcoin. So the higher the implied volatility of an option, the higher its relative price. Uh, and this this way, um, a trader can have an idea uh, easily an idea about uh, um, the relative price of the option. If the implied volatility is low, it's relatively cheap. If it's high, it's relatively expensive. Um, if 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 the trader is expecting a very volatile period, he and the the option's implied volatility is quite low. He he might be uh, good of uh, buying options and the other way around, selling options. Okay, so um, so let's let's use a concrete example for people that are maybe still struggling with this. So uh, let's say that I'm super bullish on Bitcoin. I already have Bitcoin, but that's not enough for me. I want to actually use that Bitcoin to go extra long on on futures or options uh, in order to earn more Bitcoin that the price goes up. Uh, why would I use a derivative call option, uh, for example? Uh, to to take this position rather than uh, you know Bitmax perpetual swap long or a, or a futures uh, long on crypto facilities for example, what reason should a trader decide to go over to Deribit and actually use options? Even though you're also listing futures as well, but the options I think are the really uh, special product. So why why should someone use these options instead of futures on one of the other competitors on your own side? 
yeah, there are, there are different reasons uh, to use uh, for using options. Um, well, first of all, if you are 100% 100 sure that the price is going up and only going up, you are for sure best off buying futures. <laughs> Um, but uh, the reality is not like that. Uh, even though we might have our expectations, we are never sure what, what is going to happen in the future. Um, buying options contracts, uh, that, that the, your loss is limited to that amount. So um, if, you, if you invest, for example, what, one Bitcoin in, in, in options, that's, any, that's everything you can lose. Um, and comparable exposure in futures uh, gives you unlimited losses uh, if it goes against you. Um, there is also another thing possible um, with options. Instead of buying them, you can also sell them. For this, this gives a less return, uh, less potential return than buying them. But to give an example, um, um, you can uh, sell uh, a put. A put. A put is the right to sell a Bitcoin. So if you are sure Bitcoin is going up or if you think Bitcoin will never go below, below 4,000, 4, you can actually uh, uh, receive money for giving somewhat, somebody the right to sell you a Bitcoin for, for example, $4,000. So there, it's just a um, uh, well, a completely different uh, possibility, uh, a completely different thing than, than futures. Um, selling options which is also something that uh, that just the half of the buying is half of it the other half of uh, options trading is actually selling them yeah great um okay so le um uh, let's shift uh, to a different uh, topic because you uh, recently this week you have sent a newsletter out uh, commenting on uh, the new bitmex uh, upside profit or upside profit contract, the up contract, which is basically a restricted single strike call contract where users are not allowed to go net short. So you're forced to buy only if you are in a flat exposure um, and uh, you don't have a variety of strike prices on the BitMEX up contract and there's no uh, puts uh, currently available either. So it's a very, sort of, in my opinion, it's a strange uh, product um, because it's very restrictive and uh, they flat out say that uh, only their market maker is allowed to go net short. Um, and uh, so, so you sent out this newsletter uh, commenting on this product and uh, pointing to your own options, uh, your call options markets with the same strike where you, you actually offer a variety of strike prices on the market, a nice full suite of, uh, of a variety of prices to take um, uh, liquidity on. And, uh, and BitMEX only has the single strike and, and your prices were, you, you mentioned in the newsletter, they are 10 times lower uh, than BitMEX's up contract, which would mean, uh, you know, uh, if you were able to short on the BitMEX uh, up contract, it would be a great play to just long the uh, calls on the Deribit uh, contract uh, at the same strike and then just short and write the calls on the BitMEX one and then uh, and then uh, earn the difference. Uh, but only their market maker is able to do that play. So <laughs> their market is stuck in this weird uh, distorted price that's way up there, which is why I've been quite uncomfortable with this new part of theirs. Um, so I wanted to tell people uh, uh, about you know uh, about this newsletter uh, that you wrote and um, if there's it been any change on their market if it's been uh, improved and just your general thoughts on that yes uh, uh, when we took notice about uh, this, this new uh, up contract on on bitmax of course uh, uh, we had a look at it and then uh, to our big surprise we saw it trading um, at prices up to 10 times higher than our own market. Uh, it, it's, it's not our prices, uh, the dairy bit prices, that's simply free market prices by the, the players on the market. Um, the, the reason, uh, yeah, yeah, people would want to short the contract, but if they would be able to short it, then the prices would be the same as on dairy bit. <laughs> um, because simply there is only one seller and the, the, the seller basically decides the price. It's like take it or leave it. Um, um, 
uh, yeah, and well, it, I have been a little bit astounded by the pricing um, set for the contract, uh, that it would be a little bit more um, higher than on, on dairy bit, uh, understandable, uh, with a, only a single market maker who's allowed to sell, but to put it uh, 10 times more expensive, uh, well, it, it, it hurts my eyes a little bit. Um, I've been seeing like uh, 15 Bitcoin open interest, basically meaning uh, 13 and a half bitcoins uh, investors money basically lost because the, the, they could have bought the same thing for one and a half bitcoin on the dairy bit platform so it's a little bit uh well a little bit frustrating as well to see that even with those prices um, they got some some volume in the contract uh, uh bigger than the same contract on, on dairy bit yeah, I, I I also had the same reaction when I saw. Uh, I mean, I, I could I knew they were mispriced even without looking at uh, what uh, your market prices were, and I was just. I mean, Bitmax has done some, and and just uh, Bitmax guys aren't here to make any uh, direct responses. But of course, I've, I've been uh, hoping to get uh, Sam or one of them on for a discussion. It's not so nice to talk about them when they're not here to defend directly, but I'll be re applying this argument directly to them to get their response. Uh, and, and I, you know, they deserve tons of respect for the perpetual swap. It's been a great innovation and product. And that's why it's so, so disappointing that they did this up contract thing, because it's really a deviation from the quality that uh, at least we've been used to on BitMEX, because it's very, yeah, the, the not being allowed to sell it and the distortion of the price, it, it starts to feel more like a, a goofy sort of CFD style or binary style product where you're just like guaranteed to lose money if you try, which is, I, I, I've always seen it more like let people have a free market, let them short, let them do whatever and let the price get discovered this way. Uh, once you start restricting things and not offering like proper uh, both sides in terms of call and put and a variety of strikes, like why, why do such a strange uh, product is up? So, uh, but, uh, so similar to this then, John, I wanted to get your thoughts on this other post that they made uh, right before uh, or right after they released this up contract. They made uh, Arthur, the CEO at BitMEX, um, made a post detailing their market maker uh, on uh, uh, the fact that they have invested in the market maker and have a market maker that has been active uh, on the exchange for some time. Uh, some people are complaining that this is a conflict of interest. Um, other people are, are, are you know, not surprised and they've had suspicions about, oh, maybe they're trading against us. And, and Arthur in the post ensures, or rather assures uh, everybody that there is not a conflict and that if the market maker gets too profitable, then they're instructed to uh, tighten the spread and to make the experience better on the exchange side of the business. Uh, what are your thoughts in general about... Um, about exchanges and uh, ha having a conflict if they are providing their own liquidity through a separate entity uh, and um, you know uh, just in general whether you think that's a controversial or whether it's a problem or whether traders in general have sort of a misunderstanding about market making and the role that it plays in the markets could you just talk uh, in general about this well um, i think uh, gi given the given the nature of uh, specifically uh, leveraged exchanges uh, like bitmix and deribit um it's also the responsibility of the exchange um, um, or responsibility but let's let's say that uh, the last thing an exchange would want is that liquidity is gone at a certain point so um, to 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 defend uh, to 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 prevent uh, the system from having big systematic losses, I think it's uh, defendable uh, for the exchange uh, to be there as a market maker of last resort. Let, let's let's say it, um, only putting maker orders in the book, for example, uh, in the case of uh, what we saw at uh, OKEx, that the future was just going crazy. It would have been nice from OKEx to say, okay, we are gonna we are gonna uh, buy it up from this point because it's it's just too crazy adding liquidity, adding making making liquidity to the book. Um, I think this is I think this is defendable. Uh, uh, we as Deribit also started uh, making markets in options ourselves in the beginning, though this is not the case anymore. Um, but in, in in an illiquid market, it might be needed. That being said, um, I've been reading the post quickly, and there was some 
guarantee that the market maker is um, on zero profit prices. That's the target of it. And that this very same market maker is also making the markets in the up contract. Um, so I don't know how this is compatible with selling a contract uh, 10 times or maybe right now five times. I didn't have a look at it. Five times more expensive uh, than a similar contract on, on dairy bit. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't look like a, a zero sum game for this uh, market maker on, uh, in, in this regard with the contract. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. And again, uh, I, I, I'm not thrilled with talking about BinMakes when they don't have a representative here to defend on their end. I will definitely uh, get a chance soon, hopefully, to talk with them and hear their side of things because um, you know, we've known also the BinMakes guys uh, since 2014. They've been coming on the team week and we respect them very highly. And uh, um, just in the interest of the trading community, we want to be able to get as much information for traders as possible. Uh, so, uh, John... Tell us uh, what plans you have for uh, maybe expanding to new or different products. Are you sticking only with Bitcoin as the collateral? Are you a Bitcoin maximalist or what sort of approach does there be take as, as an exchange? Uh, once upon a time, I was a Bitcoin maximalist, but then soon I had to find out uh, that might that was maybe a wrong decision. Uh, apart from, uh, from, from uh, what I think personally, um, we just listened uh, to the market. Um, there are many uh, big, uh, bi other big coins, and we will be adding uh, also products for them, uh, also accepting them as collateral. Then we can think about uh, Ether, that will be the first one, but also um, Bitcoin Cash, and probably uh, just adding more uh, with time, um, offering uh, options and futures uh, on both of them. Uh, we might, where the options really depends if there is enough market. Uh, it's it's more difficult to fill the to to get the market get the market maker providing a, a decent market. But uh, surely we are expanding uh, to to uh, more products. Yes. As, so you mentioned the other uh, coins and futures and options on those. What about uh, spot markets between the cryptos? And what about fiat? Are you interested at all to get into that uh, messy business of compliance and support that involves fiat? Um, the, yeah, the original idea um, um, of my take when uh, starting Deribit was to uh, have a fully crypto only exchange without even ever ever bother with uh, with fiat uh, as, as for derivatives for sure it will stay this way uh, like like there it is now um, that being said uh, we have a very good uh, uh, engine the just our 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 um, our code is very good um, uh, it's technically not talking about regulation technically uh, quite it would almost be very easy to to run a spot exchange uh, in, in comparison uh, with options and futures uh, that we are considering uh, to go into that direction. Um, but as of today, we don't have yet uh, fiat, as you know, nor uh, nor um, crypto spot. But we, we are seriously thinking about uh, going into that direction. Yes. And. Um... How about mobile app? You know, a lot of traders they are using OKX and BitMEX. Their mobile, I mean, BitMEX doesn't have the mobile app per se, but you know they do the wrapper thing, which is most people find it easy to navigate with. Are you are you uh, releasing either a hybrid app or a native one anytime soon? Um, actually, we we did already release. We have a a, a native app uh, in the in the App Store of uh, Apple and. Uh, uh, as well for Android, um, we are working on it already a couple of months, uh, releasing new versions. So now and then, in the current version, honestly, I I'm not sure. Uh, it's not yet possible to trade options uh, just to see your positions. Um, but uh, the current app that is out, uh, uh, yeah, it provides uh, futures trading and uh, options watching, and it will be uh, it will become a fully functional app. But the app is already there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant was in terms of fully functional. Is there a reason architecture-wise you didn't just go with hybrid from the start so that it would be compatible, full functional on all resolutions? It's 
not it's it's a native app uh, i don't understand what you mean with starting a uh, uh, hybrid uh, from the start there is just limited functionality um, uh, yeah i yeah i'm talking about the engineering the architecture decision to go with a native app that's a separate code base rather than just using the same code base and having it uh, adjust the components to be flexible for fully full function on all resolutions uh yes well we 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 simply uh, uh, made a decision uh to make it uh, a completely different uh, native app with uh, communicating via api with the system so it's it's just as native as the um it's just a different front end but it's just as native as the or how to say just as direct as the as our um uh, website front end uh, just uh just writ written again e either way it would have to be uh changed into a mo in a in a mobile app we we already have a mobile website uh, and just we could just place the mobile website in an app but that's not well we we just want to have a real app so it's just yeah that's usually redone. for some of these hybrid apps they look really good right these days they actually have it such that if you do a mobile site wrap it in uh, one of these different tools that they use to make it into a s sort of app it actually has a very similar feel as if it's totally native, but anyway, a lot, a lot of traders these days, they, they're just wanting that full functionality on mobile. So that's a, a demand that a lot of, a lot of uh, people have. Um, well, okay. So um, that, that covers more or less all the different things that I uh, had already planned. So why don't we open it up to uh, the listeners on TeamSpeak here to see if they have any intelligent well articulated questions for uh john uh there but let me you can either put it in the text um or i and i'll reduce the talk power and uh, and someone who is intelligent and articulate and has a, a smart question can can ask the question just one sec okay here's the okay so let's, let's start with the text questions actually since there's already a good one so uh Free like a bird on TeamSpeak is asking, John, does Derbit have any plans to introduce a perpetual BTC USD contract like BitMEX? John? Yeah, uh, we received this question so now and then in our uh, uh, Telegram chat as well. Um, so far, we we do not have uh, plans on um, uh, making a perpetual contract. Um, we of course we are also looking at the the, the volume of the the bitmax contract and so it it is very uh, tempting uh, to also uh, create such a product which is technically not a very big deal uh, but it's not yet on the roadmap at least uh, so i cannot make any comments about it really yeah it's hard to ignore the volume that they are doing on that contract it is um it's it's an insane the multiple billions of dollars notion it's it's quite impressive and their limit it would probably be even higher if their system was uh, capable of uh, scaling to to what people are actually using it for um bombo bomb bombo in the team speak uh, says john can you talk more about the extensive otc trading available per se where if you want a large amount of exposure you can ask in the chat uh, on there a bit and your market makers will often give you what you want at a much better rate than the spread uh, iv um uh, does that make sense john to you or uh yes i'm i'm reading the question here um uh, when we are uh, uh, sometimes uh, for uh, an option trade, it might not be uh, the best thing to just blindly execute it in the market. Um, but this is uh, specifically uh, uh, true for uh, spreads. I don't know um, if the question was about um, spread trading, but for example, if you buy the 10,000 call and sell the 12,000 call, um you can get much much better prices than the prices on the screen uh if dealing directly with a market maker like as a and trading it as a single product um so yeah for for any trader uh, uh who's thinking about uh who, that he might be able to get a better deal dealing it out with a market maker or any other trader we will always uh 
uh, put them in direct uh, contact with our best market makers. So, uh, so in summary, when you are trading on their bid, you are, uh, if you are a trader that uh, does size, then you can in the troll box or the chat of their bid as you are logged in, you can uh, ask uh, if the market maker can pr uh, market maker or market makers on there are able to provide the liquidity for a certain size that you are interested in, which isn't necessarily already in the book, uh, which is um, is really helpful for those of you who. Uh, you know, have specific needs. Um, okay, so uh, ABC on TeamSpeak says, uh, John, must I provide ID and other documents if I want to use their bit? Uh, no, uh, you don't have to. Um, we, we created um, a verification module um, just to be a little bit prefer prepared uh, if we were to uh, um, be obligated to demand so, or if we were to add products in the future, like for example, um, um, a fiat spot exchange, in such case, um, this module will become uh, obligated. But right now there is, there is no such need. Also, the way it looks like, uh, um it's it's not going to happen in the future or at least in the near future so it's not needed and uh i'm going to slip in a question uh okay actually someone else already uh, was going to ask this uh, so some countries are uh, there's uh, someone uh, chronos in teamspeak asked the question some countries are restricted from signing up slash using their bit for example the netherlands what is the reason for this and <laughs> is there a legal way to accommodate uh, traders who are prohibited in this manner? Um, yes, uh, traders from a jurisdiction that is uh, not allowed uh, uh, could, could do so through uh, another legal vehicle in another country. Um, but uh, really, there is it's it's basically just um, us complying uh, with the rules. Um, in, in the in the case of uh, the Netherlands, where we are based, uh, the Netherlands, the Dutch regulator, um, though we think it's a misunderstanding from their part. But anyway, there has been a discussion with them if our activity is to be regulated or not regulated. Um, uh, we have argued that it's not to be regulated. Uh, but they were, let's say, um, quite a little bit negative to, towards uh, what we were doing. So we proposed them um, as a middle solution to, in the meantime, uh, do not accept Dutch customers because what they are doing is protecting Dutch customers. So uh, we are unregulated in a financial kind of activity, which means that we might not be doing things the way we should do, and thus they have to protect the Dutch customers against uh, themselves trading on dairy bit. So um, just to not uh, get into a fight, basically, we decided uh, just to, to block uh, Dutch customers, which is a bit of an irony being located in the Netherlands. And are there any other jurisdictions that uh, listeners should know about that are restricted? Um, yes, the same for uh, uh, United States uh, and the, some, some other countries uh, who are on those, uh, on those lists. It's uh, always the same, same countries, basically, that are so, not allowed. So no, no North Koreans allowed? And so on. <laughs> Um, okay, the next question uh, being asked is about longer dated options, uh, like some of these leaps or, I mean, I guess leaps are like multiple years out, but some of these, uh, is, I suppose it's very difficult to provide liquidity further and further out, but uh, are there a chance to get options really far out, six months or even one year, Bombo asks in the TSP. Yes, we, we recently did at uh, the future six months out or, or September. Maybe it's already a little bit less than six months. Um, the, the, <clears throat> the issue is that uh, adding options to our platform is very easy, just a couple of clicks. Um, the, but they are basically uh, valued based on the future. Uh, we currently have three futures. Um, it's 
more difficult. So if, for example, if we would have uh, 10 expiries in the options, ideally we, we would also have 10 futures and that's just well it's just uh, too many futures with uh, too little liquidity so this is one thing that restrains us a little bit from adding further out options as they are basically risk hedged uh, with futures um but well let's let's see uh, we we will try to to add further out expiries but the, the the issue why they are not there yet is just that they would have to be hedged with with a different future with a different expiry, which is also difficult, uh, more difficult for the market maker, and and it will it, it does mean um, some some higher spreads than in the in the near, more nearby uh, options. Great. Uh, so, are there any other people in the t in the text chat that have uh, questions, or should I change the talk power to allow if someone wants to ask on the microphone if? Uh... Doesn't look like it. Um, oh wait, okay. There's um, so. Oh, this is a good point. Um, what did we? Uh, someone else is asking a question which we sort of addressed on the first call, but uh, like a basic background of there a bit. But um, free like a bird in Teamspeak is asking, please talk about security on Derby. Hot wallet protection, offline multi sig, DDoS protection. And uh, you know, how quickly you are processing withdrawals. A lot of people get frustrated with BitMEX that uh, they only have one per day uh, time to withdraw. Can you talk about a bit about fund security and this stuff? Yes, um, we we are taking um, a, a middle of a middle approach, not having uh, everything uh, in uh, offline wallets. Uh, for, for one part, uh, because it would require every day to work with those wallets, which anyway is a little is a little risk to have to take them out of the safe, basically. Um, so we are working with a hybrid system with a with a hot wallet um, and and the and the offline wallet, which is basically uh, a bank a bank safe uh, divided in different places. So even if you would crack a bank safe, you wouldn't. Uh, uh, get access to, um, to to the bitcoins, uh, and the hot wallet is very limited. Uh, usually, it is enough um, to to go on for days. Uh, sometimes a little adjustment is needed. Um, it has a it has a small balance uh, uh, below 100 bitcoin, um, and uh, yeah, it it uh, it's working perfect because there is every day coming a little bit in, every day going a little bit out. Uh, and people being able to make uh, immediate withdrawals, uh, which is just, well, it's just better for, for customers. Uh, usually uh, you want your withdrawal to be processed as soon as possible. Uh, about the, 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 the hot wallet security protection, uh, I wouldn't, comment, uh, wouldn't want to comment too much. I can just say that we did our utter best to make it very difficult to hack. Uh, that being said, it's still a hot wallet. So, um, um, but uh, even even if we were to lose the hot wallet, very uh, uh, bit can guarantee for that anyway. Um, but yeah. And uh, what about the DDoS protections? Uh, because there becomes some funny incentives for people to DDoS exchange or price feed to influence the market. How do you protect against this risk? Um, we are uh, uh, hosted with uh, OVH, uh, who has a full uh, 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 anti-DDoS protection uh, implemented uh, for all their servers. So, um, so far we didn't have any issue with, uh, with DDoS attacks, um, but uh, if the future uh, uh, proves that we need more protection, we will look at the extra services. But this is actually already included uh, in our in our hosting, so we've never never had an issue with this so far. And okay, and uh, so uh, another question someone's asking is, uh, you are, you are added Bitfinex back to your index. Could you talk about why you are re-adding Phoenix and uh, how you make this determination in general? I suppose of what. Uh, uh, spot markets or spot sorry spot exchanges are included in your index. 
Yes, we had um, uh, we had always had Bitfinex um, in the index. Only at a certain point uh, uh, there were withdrawal issues and significant price deviations. Uh, so at that point we decided just to uh, to, to to take it out, even though the highest and lowest uh, prices of our of the of the exchanges in our index are are taken out uh, at any any moment. So uh, at that time, Bitfinex was always out because it had the lowest or highest price. I don't remember. Um, just recently, um, we've seen for for a very long time that uh, Bitfinex price is quite in line with other exchanges with huge volumes. So yeah, we simply think it uh, it deserves uh, deserves back its place uh, in the index. Okay, let's uh, the fi let's have a final question. We've been uh, at it for over an hour now. I think that's uh, <laughs> we should respect everybody's time. Uh, but uh, let me just get this last guy's question in, and then we'll call it a wrap. He's asking, have you done security audits um, of the system, and the, and if so, who has conducted them? Um, honestly speaking, we haven't been doing uh, any external, uh, uh, or ha haven't, didn't have any external audits uh, uh, on our systems. Uh, we are, of course, doing our internal uh, audits uh, on a daily basis. Well, basically on a continu continuous basis automatically, but also uh, manually on a daily basis. Okay, last thing, because I don't think we clarified this in, in this discussion, and this has been a change since last time. Uh, uh, they're asking someone's asking the business case for incorporating in Lithuania, but you are actually now based in Amsterdam. So maybe as a final thing, you can tell a bit about why uh, initially uh, you're based in Lithuania and why since last we spoke you have moved from Lithuania to uh, Amsterdam. Yes, this is a quite uh, si simple explanation. Uh, uh, at the moment. Uh uh that uh, the dairy bit got born i was uh uh living in lithuania having uh, other business activities there and simply uh i started uh working on dairy bits from there uh in uh, incorporated there and later uh we moved uh, to the netherlands as uh, uh, we are dutch or not everybody in the team but at least the, the founders are dutch all right sounds good um let that's uh, no more questions, so let's uh, leave it at that. Uh, so then I'll just say thank you very much, John, for coming back and uh, and talking with us traders about what you've got going on. Uh, hopefully, people are going to be inspired to uh, get more involved in derivatives, especially options, because their bit is basically the only place you're going to be able to take any proper liquidity on um bitcoin options now so uh, learn about it get involved go to darebit.whalepool.io and uh, get started trading uh, over over at the exchange and help help the space grow by participating in it so all you traders who are active on the futures it's really not that uh, difficult to to incorporate options uh, and uh, you know we should probably also help to provide some uh, education to traders of uh, how they uh, are able to use options so so thank you very much john for for coming on it was a pleasure to have you again uh thank you for having me it uh, was a pleasure for me as well to uh, to be on uh, team speak with you guys all right cheers that's that's a wrap then okay i'm going to change the uh, talk power back Yeah, and uh, yeah, you guys always, uh, if you have a dare a bit, I, I don't, Sage doesn't like to come on. I know Sage is the dare a bit community manager, but Sage, he's a Telegram guy. He doesn't like to come on, on TeamSpeak. Uh, but it's nice to have, uh, your, BitMEX has some representatives here hanging out and other exchanges, BitPhoenix, of course, as well. Uh, it's always, if you want to uh, you know, have a guy hanging around and uh, interacting, it also will help uh, traders appreciate more options. I mean, I, th I think the biggest problem that I've noticed just in my interactions with traders and uh, that they, they they just find the options too complex they don't understand and they don't see the benefit of uh, of doing any options trading uh, if they want leverage they can do the high leverage stuff on bitmax futures or even your futures so uh, but it's it's really something that needs to happen and uh, you know people trading options more this is this is part of the growth of of bitcoin as a financial asset it's really important 
Yes, I agree. But it's it's also quite normal uh, to see, uh, um, um, especially in the beginning, um, a liquid futures market uh, and liquidity in the options still lacking. Um, apart from that, it's it it is a it is a smaller product class, as to say, like the volume in the options will always be uh, uh, lower than the than the futures. But uh, either way, we expect uh, uh, huge options trading in the future uh, where we can expect volumes to rise also to 100,000 uh, uh, contracts on one Bitcoin per day, which is uh, from where we are now still a 100 uh, times increase. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, and hopefully Bitcoin would be worth like $100,000 at that point. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 too. But I was the the one hundred thousand was uh, the the amount of <laughs> the amount of Bitcoin contracts, not not the price of Bitcoin. But uh, no, yeah, but but if I'd say that the act, the action in the market uh, it would indicate that the price is probably up <laughs> that high too because there's so much so much interest. Uh, you're absolutely absolutely right. Actually, uh, it's correct. If if it. Uh, more more trading volume and specifically if options volume takes off it it, it might mean uh, that it's really getting into mainstream yeah yeah but the currently what these listed markets with the the levers they're offering is garbage the traders don't want to uh pledge 50 percent margin what the fuck's the point in that yeah this is because it's all cleared with 100 percent uh, guarantee of payout uh, so, something that uh, um, the exchanges like Bit, Bitmex and, and Berrybit and OPEX uh, do not offer uh, the socialized loss or, or termination system. Uh, if any company were to 100% guarantee uh, payouts of derivatives contracts, they want huge collateral. That's uh, the issue. But it, yeah, could also you... be a, it could also be a regulatory issue, of course. Yeah, did, did you did you see what the um, the guy who founded Interactive Brokers he made uh, when last uh, December when CME was going live with the contracts? They uh, this guy from Interactive Brokers made a whole letter in the Wall Street Journal saying that the whole financial system is going to collapse if the CME puts their balance sheet on the line to guarantee the settlement of crypto futures. It was really melodramatic, but uh, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, well, they, they actually I, I, now I remember this letter. So yeah, it, 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 I think it's it's not true. But even if the CME would lose uh, a little bit of trust by offering too much leverage in 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 those uh, crypto contracts, it wouldn't be worth it for them, right? So they wouldn't they wouldn't go very far to accommodate customers if it would only a little bit uh, hurt their reputation as being a stable uh, organization. Yeah, yeah. Um, 